Welcome again to the next part of this presentation where we understand autoimmunity and vitamin D's correlation or relationship with autoimmune diseases. Now a lot of you who have made it this far are actually here to find a real solution for your autoimmune disorders. Okay. Now let's understand what autoimmunity is all about. But first, let us begin with the therapeutic potentials of vitamin D in autoimmune diseases or different types of autoimmune diseases where vitamin D as a therapy or the Coimbra protocol as it is called is used to manage lupus, it is used to manage rheumatoid arthritis, uh, IBS, asthma, psoriasis, multiple sclerosis, Jogren's syndrome, type 1 diabetes and so many more different autoimmune diseases. So let's understand the real definition of what autoimmunity is all about or the definition and the origins of this definition. A German immunologist Paul Elrich literally coined the term called horror autotoxicus which literally means horror of self toxicity. It actually was used as a term to describe the body's innate aversion to immunological self destruction and literally an autoimmune disorder is a horror intoxicus the way how a, someone goes through it. Now what happens when someone is going through an autoimmune disease or what happens when a trigger creates an autoimmune disorder for a person? The disorder of the immune system where either there is an immunodeficiency in which case the immune system is so deficient that it cannot protect itself or the body against external or internal factors which are attacking its own self. or at times there is hypersensitivity which is the immune system is too sensitive in which case it is also misdirected and thus attacking its own self. Autoimmune diseases are in general a group of 60 to 80 chronic inflammatory diseases with genetic predisposition and environmental modulation. Prevalence of 5 to 8 percent of these are in the US we don't really have a data, substantial data, validated data for a country like India as yet. But this comes from personal experience of being treating autoimmune disorders patients for the last couple of years. And we are seeing the numbers rise day by day somehow. So this tells us one obviously of the overall inflammatory factors that we are all exposed to in our lifestyle the pollution, the food habits, the severely nutritionally deficient food that we actually get and also lack of exposure to sunlight, lack of nutritional availability or bioavailability, all the cofactor minerals and vitamins from our foods or from different sources including also the quality of nutraceuticals or supplements which are actually available over the counter. All of these play a massive role in the increase of autoimmune disorders even in India. Now prevalence is generally observed greater in the female population than male population where the observation is that 75% of the cases are in women. Fourth largest disease class is in women for autoimmune disorders. Okay. Now in this slide we understand how autoimmunity occurs where either there are the immune system is suppressed or is severely deficient. There is a genetic predisposition which runs probably in the family. Uh, there are environmental factors which work as a trigger which set in motion the autoimmune response and also there are hormonal factors. This slide or this graph actually shows how over the last couple of decades right from 1950s till the year 2000 there is a rising incidence of autoimmune diseases where there is a massive rise in multiple sclerosis, celiac disease, Crohn's disease and type 1 diabetes, asthma. All of these have been suddenly increasing and obviously we've gone through this in detail in the previous uh, presentation parts where the relation of severe deficiency of vitamin D is also at the root of it or one of the real factors which is causing such autoimmune diseases rise in the overall population. Now pick any organ, any organ and autoimmunity can affect any organ or organ system in the human body. 
when you start looking at this image, you will be able to see all the different autoimmune diseases correlating to their organ system. So there is multiple sclerosis, that is, there is autoimmune uveitis, there is Sjogren's syndrome, there is rheumatic fever, there is autoimmune hepatitis, uh, there is rheumatoid arthritis, there is ulcerative col colitis and the list goes on. So autoimmunity can affect any organ system of the body. We will go through a few basic autoimmune disorders which are the most commonly seen. Psoriasis is a chronic disease of the immune system where the skin cells become overly active and multiply too quickly. And what you see is scaly inflamed skin or silvery skin as it's called on the elbows, on the knee, on the scalp and other parts of the body. Type 1 diabetes is where the body is unable to produce or use insulin properly. There is T cells, uh, T cell disease and T cells attack and destroy the pancreatic beta cells. It literally means that some people who have type 1 diabetes, uh, it means that their pancreas can no longer produce insulin. Multiple sclerosis, the myelin the basic protein is the primary autoantigen for Th1 cells and in multiple sclerosis this myelin sheath which is a single cell whose membrane wraps around the axon is being destroyed with the inflammation and the scarring okay so again multiple sclerosis is an autoimmune disorder Hashimoto's thyroiditis Again, very commonly seen where one experiences fatigue, weight gain, T3, T4 and the TSH uh, levels are abnormal on the lab. The TPO antibody is positive, the thyroglobulin is positive and levothyroxine is the only drug therapy that is given as a replacement therapy. With rheumatoid arthritis, it begins with pains, swellings and arthritis of the joint, small joints. RA factor and anti-CCP is generally observed to be positive. At times, we see a lot of patients who, especially in rheumatoid arthritis, whose RA factor may be positive, but the anti-CCP is still not positive. And these are early detections. But eventually, if the immune system is left unregulated, eventually we do end up identifying this through the lab work. A disease called myasthenia gravis, it's marked as a progressive weakness and loss of muscle control. It is classified as a B cell disease and autoantibodies and against the nicotinic acetylcholine receptors. Another disease that is very commonly seen is SLE or systemic lupus erythematosus, which involves the joint and the muscle pains a rash or it's also called as a butterfly rash on this on the face uh, if you can see the image you will understand how what type of a butterfly rash is visible on the face chronic and this is a chronic ailment and it involves multiple organs now the problem with all of these autoimmune diseases is identifying the right line of treatment which is efficient effective natural holistic and comprehensive and can be sustainably utilized for a longer duration at times even a lifetime management but conventional medicine currently provides us with treatments which are actually quite limited one is provided with pain relief replacement therapy with either the thyroid hormone or the insulin there are immunosuppressants or disease modifying agents or biologicals so on the right side of the screen you can see the class of drugs which are generally prescribed for these types of treatments but there is a severe limitation of the current management options which suppresses the immunity they are not curative and the side effects range from multiple and very serious issues involving the gut liver injury kidney damage in the long run reduces the blood cell etc therapeutic potentials of vitamin d and we saw this slide earlier so i will not go into it again but let's start with a case study of how vitamin d was reduced by the RDA and over the number of years is has directly increased the incidence of type 1 diabetes in children in Finland. So this particular graph actually shows us that way back in 1964 the recommended doses of vitamin D intake were as high as 4500 IU for children in Finland because in Finland uh, vitamin D is generally 
supplement it through their milk or it is fortified the milk over there which is available is fortified it, it used to be fortified with vitamin D so right up till 1964 it used to be children used to get that good 4500 IU worth of vitamin D on a daily basis if they were consuming one glass of milk and then in 1964 it got recommended to bring it down to 2000 IU and that is exactly when if you look at the graph the there was a mild spike in the type 1 diabetes incidences by 1975 the RDA values got further reduced across Europe and they were brought down to 1000 IU and you still look that the graph again had a minor spike but it actually went on increasing over the number of years and come 1992 the RDA values got reduced to 400 IUs and can you see the overall spike in the incidence of type 1 diabetes and what immunologic effects of vitamin D on human health and disease is what is published in this case study but just look at what this did to their kids and who are now suffering type 1 diabetes so it's 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 a simple inverse correlation of lower vitamin D availability in the blood and higher the incidence of autoimmune diseases now in this chart we will understand the action of vitamin D on the immune cells in the previous presentations I explained how there are different pathways to vitamin D but ultimately there are vitamin D receptors in each and every cell when activated form of vitamin D is received by a vitamin D receptor its autocrine and paracrine action enhances the T regulatory cells it also enhances the action of beta defensins and it actually suppresses the TH17 manifestation or messaging from which is the inflammatory messaging from the body so vitamin D and its adaptive immune response where vitamin D is such a powerful regulator that it modulates this entire process by promoting a timely shift from TH1 to TH2 in cell this in the cell immune profile or the cell mediated to antibody it suppresses the TH17 reaction caused by production of immune messenger cytokine called interleukin 17 it also facilitates the differentiation of T regulatory cells that balance the immune response so here's a image uh, diagram or a diagram which will help you understand how that balancing act is gently achieved just by vitamin D receptor and the activated form of vitamin D as a autocrine and a paracrine action now vitamin D suppresses the mediator of inflammation interleukin 17 this is published by an international journal which explains what I just tried explaining to you uh, vitamin D in autoimmunity a molecular mechanisms and its therapeutic potential so this entire presentation is about presenting the efficacy and the efficiency of this line of treatment which is a high dose of vitamin D as a therapy for autoimmune diseases in this slide we will understand vitamin D's direct relation to your gut microbiome now we all have heard a lot of information a lot of videos on on you know the social media of late about different microbiomes and how uh, prebiotics probiotics are necessary but none of them are actually going or talking about the real root of the problem which is vitamin D deficiency toxins in our environment drugs that we are uh, so these are therapeutic drugs that people have to take as life-saving drugs for their chronic ailments processed foods and junk foods alcohol and stress all of these come coming together create a lot of inflammation all across our body but especially in the gut and causes what we call as a leaky gut or gut dysbiosis which fundamentally has missing microbes because they are dead and the colonies are dead which ultimately leads to more inflammation in the colon which gives you intolerances or allergic reactions towards a lot of foods which in turn is a immune dysregulation and the body cannot control that inflammation and that in turn triggers or kicks in the autoimmune disease or autoimmune response now if simply vitamin D is supplemented correctly or it is used therapeutically in autoimmune diseases it actually helps one reduce the inflammation second actually addresses the gut permeability and strengthens the gut walls in which case the leaky toxins do not re-enter the bloodstream the importance of vitamin D on intestinal microbiota vitamin D mediated signaling 
helps keep the intact physical barrier in the gut, helps improve microbial homeostasis and immune tolerance. While when someone is either deficient of vitamin D or is not able to synthesize vitamin D correctly, there is severe gut permeability, there is microbial dysbiosis and muscular uh, mucosal inflammation. Now this particular study uh, suggests that vitamin D status controls gut homeostasis by modulating the gut microbiota. The gut microbiota regulate host metabolism and the immune response. It also basically the, the study itself is self-explanatory where it suggests vitamin D and microbiota, two sides of the same coin in immunomodulatory aspects. So the next time you're thinking about fixing your gut, now this may be true for an autoimmune patient or a normal person. If you need to fix your gut, please look into vitamin D till you don't fix vitamin D levels in your blood or in your body, your health is really not going to be improving. Now this is Professor Cesario Coimbra. He was the inventor of this entire methodology of using vitamin D at therapeutic dosages. And his study on vitamin D is needed for myelination of the nerves in multiple sclerosis is a published study where it suggests vitamin D treatment in multiple sclerosis. Vitamin D as a therapy or the Coimbra protocol is a clinically validated published in international journals across the world as a line of treatment, a line of therapy which can really help manage an autoimmune disorder. Vitamin D and disease activity in multiple sclerosis where the study <coughs> suggests lower the serum vitamin D levels are associated with higher relapse risk in multiple sclerosis. But with each doubling of serum 25 OHD which is the vitamin D concentration, the exaberation rate decreased by 27%. Now, what is this telling us? That with each doubling of vitamin D level, so let's say, assume someone's vitamin D was uh, level was at 40 and a doubling was done and the levels were brought up to 80, the exaberation rate decreased by 27%. Now, isn't that amazing? This again is a before and after uh, study of psoriasis managed with vitamin D therapy and this is the paper published on psoriasis a research paper role in psoriasis a pilot study assessing the effect of prolonged administration of vitamin D in daily doses of vitamin D on the clinical course of vitiligo and psoriasis vitamin D can help with managing vitiligo and psoriasis or chronic skin conditions this is a case of atopic dermatitis this study talks about vitamin D and the disease activity in rheumatoid arthritis. Now, it suggests that vitamin D deficient pa patients with active rheumatoid arthritis had six times the odds of being moderately or severely disabled. Vitamin D and the disease activity in rheumatoid arthritis, the association between serum vitamin D metabolite levels and disease activity in the patients with early inflammatory polyarthritis. This is a case of systemic lupus erythematosus where if you look at the butterfly rash which is the sign of lupus you can see the before and after effect and the study how it suggests that serum concentration levels of vitamin d in the patients with sle are inversely related to the disease activity is it time to routinely supplement patients with sle with vitamin d is what the study suggests vitamin d and its actions in ibs the disease activity high BMI and the increased biochemical marker ESR are associated with low vitamin D levels. Vitamin D as an immunomodulator. Now autoimmune diseases due to its dysregulated immune system produce aberrant TH17 reaction. Vitamin D the largest regulator of the immune system that modulates this process. By it suppressing the TH17 reaction caused by overproduction of the immune messenger called the cytokine or the interleukin-17 and it increases the proliferation of T regulatory cells that balance the immune response. Is correcting vitamin D levels to 50 or 60 NGML the treatment for autoimmune diseases? Yes and no because it totally depends on a lot of other factors which we call as uh, genetic polymorphisms or vitamin D resistance. So let me introduce you to this additional concept of genetic variation of genetic polymorphisms and how these at times act as a resistance. So you have to use much higher doses for such patients to be able to increase their vitamin D level 
in the active form in their bloodstream. So this particular study suggests about how vitamin genetic poly polymorphisms play a role in resistance to vitamin D. Now genetic polymorphisms cause resistance to vitamin D and immunomodulatory effects. Uh, this study basically confirms of the association between multiple sclerosis. Patients with autoimmune diseases have polymorphic changes of vitamin D 1 alpha hydroxylase enzyme or resistance to biologic effects of vitamin D. Again, this study proves the, the logic behind that autoimmune patients or patients with let's say Hashimoto's thyroiditis or Graves disease or type 1 diabetes, they need much higher doses of vitamin D for that entire immunologic action to happen. VDR gene polymorphism in systemic lupus erythemas, again proven by a clinical study. VDR gene polymorphism and asthma, again a study you know, providing us the background on this. Autism as an autoimmune disorder. Uh, this particular study suggests that children with autism had significantly higher serum ILA-17 which is interleukin 17A levels than healthy controls and serum ILA-17A levels were raised in the group with autism and the levels correlated significantly with the severity of their autism. Now, we just understood from the previous parts of the presentation how vitamin D suppresses this interleukin-17 or ILA-17 messaging in the body. So, abnormal vitamin D metabolism. Now, this can either come from a vitamin D deficiency or a vitamin D resistance. Vitamin D resistance as a possible cause of autoimmune diseases itself is the hypothesis confirmed by a therapeutic high dose of vitamin D protocol. This is a case study where we are presenting a before and after. So, a higher dose of vitamin D and if you look at the lesion of the multiple sclerosis on the scan before and after the use of high dose of vitamin D as a therapy and the lesion is completely disappeared. Higher doses of vitamin D in multiple sclerosis. Now can you see the brain scans and can you see the lesion completely disappearing? So again a message from Dr. Coimbra where he says when there is a deficiency of vitamin D the person can't regulate which means stimulate or reduce the activity of thousands of biological functions inside the cell of the immune system. The deficiency of this one substance amounts to a disaster for the immune system. Presenting to you a natural immunotherapy. Sunshine in a capsule. Yes, for autoimmune patients, it is the need of the hour to supplement correctly at therapeutic dosages which are much higher and need to be clinically monitored by a professional. It needs to be administered because the way how Dr. Coimbra again had mentioned in one of the previous slides which I shared that it is it is our obligation, it is not a favor to provide them what the body is demanding for. This particular is one of our last slides just to explain to you quickly how vitamin D works as an anti-inflammatory in the entire immune modulation as an action. So thank you so much and I will see you again in the next part of this presentation.